Pinpoint is an open-source APM for large-scale distributed systems. We'd like to introduce you to the basics of Pinpoint, as well as some useful features you could use when monitoring your own system. The menu at the top opens up the application list, says the server map depth and duration, and has links for help and configuration pages. Clicking on the question mark brings up the help overlay, and you may use it whenever to view a more detailed information about a certain feature. If the application list is too long, or if the server map is too complex, you may bookmark your application and set default search depth in the configuration page. Please note that in version 1.5.0, these values are stored in the browser's local storage, so they may be lost when the browser cache is emptied, or when you change to a different browser. We are however planning to persist them in a database, along with implementing a proper user system in future releases. You may also configure alarms from the configuration page if you have alarms implemented. First, create a user group to add users from the user list on the right. The user list is initially populated with users from the same group, but you may also search for users in a different group. Click on the alarm button to set triggers for various situations. Again, you can click on the help button for a detail guide. Now let's check out the main features by choosing one of our favorite applications. We'll first go over the different panes of the server map, then we'll move on to the transaction and the inspector view. The server map shows the overall status and composition of components in a distributed system. Each box or node represents an application, and their icon represents the application type. The number inside the node shows the agent count registered under the same application name. There is a real-time active thread chart at the bottom of the screen. This chart shows the number of active threads and their statuses of the agents registered under a selected node. You can utilize this chart to check the status of certain servers as they are undeployed or redeployed. Or if a certain server is acting strange such as having lots of prolonged blocking threads. We have laid the foundation for handling real-time data in version 1.5.0 and we're excited to think about all the different functionality we can introduce in future releases. Let's take a look at the charts on the right. First, there's the scatter chart at the top showing response time distribution. You can easily check the service status by identifying various patterns here. For a detailed look of each individual request, drag over the chart to select them, and you'll be taken to the transaction view. Next is the response summary chart. This chart counts the number of requests and slots them into a time window according to their response time. Clicking on the error bar will take you to transaction view, showing detailed information about all the transactions that have thrown an exception. Finally, there's the load chart. This chart slots the number of requests by the response time and plots them over a certain range of time. You can easily identify cases where response time suffered due to an exponential increase in the number of requests. These charts are plotted at the application level, so it is not possible to check the individual server patterns here. For such cases, clicking on the server button will open up a window with the response summary chart and the low chart of each individual server. Now we will take a look at the transaction view. The transaction view offers a detailed look at each individual requests. To open up the transaction view, drag over the scatter chart as mentioned earlier. The transaction list in the top half of the window is initially sorted by response time with the longest one at the top. Selecting a transaction here will display its call tree at the bottom half of the screen. The call tree offers visibility all the way down to the code level, and you may use it to find out which method took a long time or where the exception occurred. The colors on the left are used to separate codes executed in different nodes. The server map tab shows the server map of the selected request. 
The Timeline tab offers a visual representation of execution times. The Mixed View tab links up an execution point with various graphs such as CPU usage and garbage collection. If a certain method was unusually slow, you may use this tab to infer the cause, such as checking if there was a full garbage collection that slowed down the execution. There are times when you need to filter out certain requests. For example, you might want to look at requests coming from a certain server or requests going to a certain server. You might also want to look at requests with a certain URL pattern. Pinpoint offers transaction filtering for such cases. Right-click on an edge you would like to apply the filter to. This will bring up a context menu with two options. The Filter Transaction option will redraw the server map with only the transactions that have actually passed through the edge. The Transaction Filter Wizard option opens up UI where you may apply various filters. Please note that right-clicking on an edge pointing to unknown nodes with multiple endpoints will not bring up the context menu. For such cases, you may instead use the filter icon present in the low chart on the right. The inspector view shows various information about the JDM, along with charts showing various metrics such as CPU usage, heap usage, and TPS. The charts are time-synchronized for easier analysis. This concludes our introductory video on Pinpoint. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in our Google Groups, or open up an issue. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed it.